Morning guys, Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School back here at the Forge again today. We're going to work on another project today that is part of phase three for the Pathfinder certification course. Um, part of the instructor phase of this course is to learn certain aspects of forging because I believe it's a very good self-reliance skill. What we're going to do today is we're going to make a set of what I would call cooking irons also commonly referred to as a pot hanger or a squirrel cooker. And what it basically is, is a device that's forked on one end, it has a pot hook on the other, and it has a stand with a pigtail on it so that it can be adjusted for height and length over your fire so that you can either cook meat on the fork or you can hang your pot or your bucket off of the hook. So we're gonna use two pieces of rebar to work on that today. So the entire cost of this project, other than, you know, maybe a few cents or worth of coal, or some wood is going to be two dollars worth of rebar. This is three eighths rebar. So let's get this stuff in here and get it heated up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one end of this and draw it out a little bit because we have to make a pigtail on it. I'm not going to draw it out a whole lot, just enough to thin it down some. I'm going to draw this out just a little bit more before I do that. Now a lot of guys will wear gloves when they do this and it's probably a good idea for safety. But I used to be a welder. I'm used to working with hot metal and I find that as long as sparks aren't flying or getting on you and hitting your hands, things like that, I'd almost rather have that feel of the metal because sometimes when you put gloves on and you work with hot metal, by the time you figure out it was too hot, it's too late and you're already going to get burnt. So I'd almost rather work with that metal hot in my hand and then I know when it's too hot to touch and I can just let go of it. Again, I'm not going to draw this out too far, just enough to put my pigtail on it on this side. going to do is work this on the horn, tight against the end as we can, heat it up, and that's what's going to form our pigtail here. It's just going to have to be really hot because it's a thick piece of rebar. It's rebar's a medium carbon steel for the most part, most of it that you find. See, we're starting to get that turn. We're going to want that turn to be pretty tight because it really only needs to be enough to get a piece of rebar through there. That three inch rebar. See we got a little tail in there, turned all the way around. I'm going to heat that up and spread it just a little bit, give it a little bit more surface area width wise. Alright, what we're wanting here is a good friction fit on our 3 8 rebar. If that means we got to open it up just a little bit to get that, that's fine too. But this is kind of what we're looking for. We'll spread that out just a little bit and we'll angle that off just a shade to give us even better friction as soon as we heat it back up. Now we'll tap it here and that's going to cause separation of that pigtail. It's also going to give us a little bit of an angle, which is going to give us better friction here when we drive it into ground when we're at an angle. Okay? That's not too bad right there. That's going to work pretty good. Okay. Now we're going to take this and we're going to quench this side. Cool it down. And then we're going to 
draw a point on the other side. That'll be the first piece of our two-piece cooking irons. And I'm going to draw it out some for the point, and hopefully that's going to equal out to having something 18 inches. And that should be about the length of my bedroll, or close to it, so I can actually stuff that set in my bedroll to carry it under my pack, and it won't cause me any extra encumbrance inside my pack. Now we'll quench it. Okay, so that gives us the first part of our cooking irons. And hopefully that's pretty close to 18 inches long. Now we go to step two. The next part of this project is probably the most tedious part. We're going to make a fork on the end of this stick for cooking meat or on the end of this rebar for making cooking meat, like chunks of meat, things like that, or whole squirrels, whole rabbits. We'll get our fire stoked back up real good here and get after it. So we'll really get a good hot fire going here because we're going to have to do some hot cutting to split this out. We're going to use a just a flat chisel for that. You can buy these. At, I think I bought this one at Menards for probably five or six bucks. Very, very good item to have for hot and cold cutting steel. And you can see there's a huge difference in this flame with the fact that we turned that blower on high. More in there. First thing we have to do is we have to flatten this piece out. We have to get a good flat right here. We need that flat to be at least the length of our tines. edge of the anvil to kind of create a separation between my tines, where my tines are going to be, and where the rest of my piece is. Okay, we're getting close now. Okay, we're going to try to keep this cut as straight as we can, as even as we can. score it the first time, then we'll heat it up again. Okay, we're starting to get some separation in there. We just got to keep heating and cutting. Okay, now we got our fork separated. We need to kind of get one of them completely out of our way for a minute so that we can work on them one at a time to draw them out.
pretty much out of our way now. Now we can start on the other side here and start working on it. Getting it where we want it. Okay, I'm going to blast the heat to this thing a little bit. I want to try to get the center portion of this thing heated up really good without too much heat on the tines. So I don't get them overheated. But at the same time, I need that. I need to create that separation right there between the two tines really well. And flatten that out. So I can really see where I'm at. See that right here. So again, I'm going to try to bend that center, get that center heated up again, and separate those columns a little better than that, or those tines a little better. I'm using the horn to get right in the middle of that to kind of get that separation that I'm looking for right there. Now I'm going to try to heat these tongs, these tines up and bend them the way I want them. Try to get them evened out. Still got a little bit of unevenness right here that I'm not real happy with. It's not horrible off, but I don't like it. I'm going to have to cut one of the tines off because it's a little bit longer than the other one. If I can. Because it is not much longer at all. There we go. Now our forks are even. Okay guys, final heat before we quench the fork. I think I've got it manipulated around the way I want it now. Sometimes it just takes a little tweaking with tongs or pliers to get exactly what you want. I think I'm going to go with that. Quench that dude out. Okay, last step is we have to make a pot hanger on the other side. So now we have to work on Get the other side heated up. So I get that drawn down to a point, I just want to make sure I got everything straight before I go to the next step. And that's to put a flat in it 
for my pot bale, for my bucket bale. Okay guys, so we have our two pieces for our fire iron set or our cook set. We have one that has a pigtail and a point, the other one that has a pot hook and a meat hook. All you need to do is shove it through the pigtail like this and it's basically friction held. That's what I like about this rebar, it kind of has bumps on it so it really holds good friction. Then you find a good style of place to shove this in the ground, it's kind of frozen right now. And you can either hang your pot from that over the fire or you can turn it around like this and put meat over the fire either way so it works pretty good and then you can use you know this whole thing can be used to adjust your fire or poke your fire or whatever the case may be and it's a pretty small package you put the pigtail in the fork and pull it together like that you got a pretty small package you can shove that right in your bedroll and not even know it's there. It doesn't weigh very much. 3H rebar, 2 8 inch pieces doesn't weigh very much. Okay, guys, well, I'm Dave Cameron with Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me for another video in this blacksmithing series. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family. I'll be back with another video in this blacksmithing series, as well as many others, as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.